I do apologize for some technical issues. Um, uh, start over again and welcome you uh, um, uh, here at our webinar. Uh, I uh, begin by introducing myself. My name is Anna Yurko. I'm a professor at the International College of Economics and Finance. I uh, teach uh, uh, microeconomics uh, in the master's program. I'm also uh, 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 vice academic director of the master's program and I'm uh, part of the admissions process. So I get to know uh, everybody who comes in and studies um, uh, at ISAP. Uh, then after I uh, uh, tell you a bit uh, about the master's program, uh, I would uh, hand over my virtual microphone uh, to uh, our other speakers, uh, our wonderful graduates, uh, who we're very proud of, uh, Artem Takarenko, Vladimir Maligin, and Vladislav Glazov, and uh, they'll uh, uh, tell you a bit about their, uh, their careers uh, and uh, uh, give you some advice. So uh, International College of Economics and Finance is, uh, uh, started out uh, actually as a, a bachelor program uh, in 1997. Uh, the bachelor program uh, that gives uh, uh, its graduate uh, double degree, diplomas uh, both of high school of economics and of University of London. And uh, uh, from the start, uh, it was uh, uh, founded with the uh, academic support uh, uh, from uh, LSE, a very prominent uh, educational and uh, research uh, institution. Uh, they uh, uh, helped both uh, uh, administratively, both with the setting up the program, uh, bachelor's program, and uh, uh, most importantly with, uh, uh, with hiring uh, faculty, uh, qualified uh, uh, teachers for, uh, for the program. So that uh, we can give uh, our students the best education there is. Now, since then, the master's program was also started quite a, a while back, more than uh, 10 years ago, and uh, uh, it's grown in size. So uh, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, every year, the two programs jointly, we teach uh, approximately uh, 1,000 students, so even a bit more. Uh, already 1,500 uh, students graduated uh, uh, over, those, uh, over that span of time. And it's uh, uh, fairly big in terms of faculty. Uh, in both bachelor's and master's program, there are about 150 professors, and uh, uh, more than 20 of them have uh, PhD degrees in economics and finance from, uh, uh, from the best institution. So the goal of this slide uh, um, uh, here is to tell you that uh, um, uh, ISAF uh, gives the, the, the top-notch uh, education and um, I can tell you uh, this, actually you can read the slide uh, yourself so I can just uh, uh, share some of my knowledge and experience. Uh, I, have, uh, uh, I have studied uh, in, uh, in both in Russia and the United States myself be before becoming a professor at ISAF. Uh, so I've, uh, I've graduated at Saratov State University. I also done part of my bachelor's studies uh, in, in the US and also I did my PhD in the United States in the University of Texas at Austin, um, which is uh, uh, among, uh, among the best economics programs in the world. And I've also taught during my PhD studies there. So I uh, have some you know, background knowledge to compare the educational systems and the qualities of education. And I uh, can confidently say that uh, the kind of education that our students receive uh, is, uh, um, is excellent by, uh, by, all, uh, by all standards and on par what uh, uh, they would have received in other educational, top educational institutions. And uh, this is basically accomplished uh, due to, well, first, the rigorous hiring process uh, at ISIF. So professors that teach at the master's program uh, come from uh, uh, come with PhDs from top-ranked universities. Uh, we also have visiting professors that uh, come in and uh, teach uh, short uh, uh, courses. And because of our you know, strong ties uh, with uh, with LSE, most of uh, most of uh, these professors come from uh, UK schools. And uh, uh, we also have uh, borrowed from the UK educational system. Uh, um, when they uh, have their courses, 
there is uh, um, always an external uh, faculty from uh, another university that participates uh, in the exams. So uh, both in the design in the paper and in, in grading it. So there is double grading tradition in the UK schools. And that's what we have uh, in, at ISIF in the master's program as well. Uh, for the core courses, uh, there is also an external examiner from, um, from London uh, who uh, participates in uh, putting the paper together and then grading it. Uh, also, uh, we uh, provide opportunities for international academic mobility. Uh, which we believe is, uh, is it's useful for, for the students to, um, to get another diploma from, from another university uh, in a good place in Europe uh, or uh, in the US and uh, get uh, international experience. It's uh, helpful uh, in terms of building a career. To that end, uh, uh, ISAF has uh, exchange programs with the uh, uh, Tilburg University, University of Access, uh, Essex, sorry, and we have a double degree program with Lewis, uh, um, very good uh, university in Italy. Uh, also, HEC High School of Economics is a very big place, so there are lots of uh, partner universities and connections established uh, via HEC, uh, and the, uh, our students can take advantage of, uh, of those opportunities. Plus, many choose. Uh, um, you know, the, the third option, uh, finding uh, a master's program in Europe. Uh, most of them are one-year programs, and uh, uh, our program is a two-year program. So during the second year, um, some students um, uh, apply, uh, go and study at uh, a master's program in Europe. And when they come back, they uh, receive the diploma from that university plus our diploma, uh, if the coursework uh, is similar among the two schools. All right, uh, so this is uh, to tell you um, uh, about some uh, interesting people that come and uh, uh, give speeches to our graduates. So this is a graduation ceremony uh, with uh, Christopher Pissaridis as a speaker. The graduation ceremony usually takes place at the uh, residence uh, of uh, the UK, uh, UK's ambassador. Well, this year, during the uh, due to the COVID situation, uh, we weren't able to uh, to have it. But uh, hopefully, in the future, we'll we'll resume this uh, this wonderful tradition. And uh, uh, a bit about uh, the structure of our program, the kind of courses uh, that, uh, that we teach students that we teach to our students. Uh, it's a very um, rigorous, um, uh, rigorous program. So we uh, uh, give our students uh, a very, um, very thorough um, uh, foundations. Uh, so theoretical courses and courses that are meant to teach uh, um, to teach to tools that can be then applied uh, by uh, our uh, graduates in their future career. So during the first year, uh, uh, student, students study most of the core courses, which are microeconomics, macroeconomics, econometrics, mathematics, and financial economics. And uh, then uh, uh, during the second year, there are um, you know, two main courses, and uh, the students also get to build their individual tracks according to their interests and to their career goals. Uh, uh, using uh, uh, by adding various uh, electives to to their study plan, um, some of the electives are again they uh, they provide more more tools like machine learning and R programming courses. Uh, some of the electives are more applied. So depending on the career goals, students can uh, can choose and, and build up uh, their portfolio of courses. Uh, as I uh, said before, the full time the full-time academics uh, faculty at ISF uh, have PhDs from uh, uh, top universities uh, um, of those of those schools, and. Uh, from 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 just some of the faculty, uh, international faculty 
that teach at the master's program and that uh, students get to know. And then, of course, there are uh, Russian professors that, uh, uh, like myself, that receive education in, uh, uh, in prominent schools uh, uh, in the US or, or Europe, and then teach, uh, uh, teach the master's uh, students. So the, uh, here you, you see uh, Alexei Bolotov uh, teaching financial market uh, microstructure course. Then there are visiting lectures. Uh, uh, and, uh, this photo is uh, uh, Chris Juliard from London School of Economics. Uh, but there are some other people who uh, come uh, to ISIF and, and uh, teach a short but very loaded intense uh, uh, courses to our students. And uh, all of the people listed here are from, uh, from the UK uh, universities, uh, very good ones. But uh, this is due to our good connections with, uh, with London School of Economics and some uh, relationships we've, we've built up. Uh, but also, uh, this is not the whole list. Uh, we've, we've had people's, people from other places uh, visiting um, as well. And uh, um, it's also important uh, to get some um, uh, real uh, applied uh, education as well. Uh, so we have uh, uh, faculty, uh, people that have received very good education in, uh, in the best places in economics and finance. And then they've built their careers in the financial sector, or in the real sector. And they also, uh, well, they also happen to enjoy teaching so they come and, uh, and teach courses at the master's program. This is uh, what uh, our graduates uh, end up doing. Um, the majority uh, of graduates build their careers in financial institutions. As you can see here, some go to consulting. Uh, a, a decent uh, share continue their studies uh, at the top universities. They go for PhDs. Um, the list of companies where people end up and uh, the list of universities where we've placed students for PhDs. And some of just a very, very, very brief um, introduction to some of our alumni. Uh, there are many more uh, people, of course, that we're proud of who've built successful careers. Uh, we also have uh, international students, and the, uh, the, that part of, of the group is growing. Uh, we're getting more and more international students into the program. Uh, they graduate, and uh, uh, they're also uh, very good. They built uh, successful careers afterwards. To help uh, our students and our graduates um, uh, in, to achieve their uh, career goals. So we at, at ISIF we have a, a career center and it provides uh, support for those who want to have a career in business and also for those who want to have a career in academia. Uh, since we're you know, the faculty, uh, we all have PhDs, we all have careers in academia and we enjoy it. Um, we're very happy to support our students uh, in that track. So it's not just the ISIF career center that does it, but also ISIF faculty. And uh, uh, there are a few slides here about the admissions process, uh, but uh, I don't want to spend much time on it. We're going to have an open door um, uh, event uh, in November, on November 15th. And I would uh, very much uh, like to encourage you to attend. Uh, there will be uh, much more detailed uh, information both about the program and about the admissions process. So here I'll, I'll just uh, say very briefly a few words on it. Uh, there are three key tracks on uh, uh, how uh, students uh, uh, enter the program. The main one, the primary one, is number one. It's portfolio competition. So there are some English language requirements because uh, um, uh, this is an English language program. Everything is taught in English. And then the students send us uh, their materials, PCV, uh, uh, most importantly, transcripts and diplomas from uh, their previous studies. And the, uh, then there is an interview where uh, the admissions committee asks uh, various questions about the background, um, 
the, the student's education and the career goals. And then the decisions are, are made uh, based on that. Uh, there are also several Olympiads that we use uh, uh, to admit students. And uh, uh, the last track uh, is uh, via exams. Uh, uh, students can take GRE subject test and math plus GRE general, and if the scores are sufficiently high, we also admit, admit the applicants with, uh, with those qualifications. Uh, tuition fee we do not have for the coming year, but uh, uh, this is what it was, what it is this uh, academic year, and we expect it uh, to be similar in the future. Um, there are lots of tuition waivers and scholarships that are also available uh, to, to good to strong applicants. Uh, the um, time tracks uh, for international and for national admissions are a bit different. We also have a notifications procedure for um, uh, for Russian applicants, so that you can uh, again learn more about it uh, uh, on November 15 at the open door event. And uh, uh, our successful applicants have uh, at least a bachelor's degree and a strong mathematical background. Uh, some knowledge of economics and finance is uh, also welcome, but that's something we can teach. Uh, if you have uh, if you have the background and the tools, and the tools we need for teaching uh, economics and finance are good uh, good mathematical skills. So so this is the main qualification for our applicants. And uh, um, as uh, our students and our graduates can tell you, we make them work really really hard. Uh, they spend a lot of time studying. But there is also some time for fun things. And for international students, there is support coming from both uh, um, ISEF and from High School of Economics. So um, again, this is a reminder of uh, what I've said before, that there will be an open, open doors event, or open day. We'll hold it online on November 15 at, uh, um, at 12. Um, at 12 o'clock. That's uh, it had to say. So we can go to our virtual. We can go to now to our um, our alumni and have them tell you about about their careers and give some advice about their experiences. Let me. So let me hand over the microphone. Uh, yes, hello everyone. Um, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this event. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to represent my faculty today. Uh, by means of introduction, my name is Artem and I graduated from ISEV master's program in 2015. Um, prior to undertaking the master's degree at ISEV, I studied applied mathematics and economics um, uh, at Financial University and at LSE. Uh, since my graduation, I've been living in London and uh, I'm an equity research analyst at Credit Suisse. Uh, well, firstly, congratulations with uh, considering ISEV as one of your options. I can say with a high degree of certainty that you'll never regret the decision of signing yourself up to this challenging but exciting and rewarding journey, which will definitely be very memorable. Uh, at, the, at the time when I was at the same juncture as uh, all of you are at the moment, um, I was lucky enough to receive offers from three uh, Russian master's programs, which were uh, the economics faculty of um, uh, Moscow State University, the finance faculty of New Economics School, and also from ISAF. Uh, it wasn't an easy choice for me, and um, I'd like to share some of the main reasons why I decided to uh, pursue the uh, ISAF route. Uh, firstly, first and foremost, I was amazed by the involvement of ISAF professors and um, um, their involvement with students' destinies. Um, I was surprised that after sharing all, all my concerns about uh, the choice between the programs, uh, it was only Maxim Igorovich who is leading the program who 
actually called uh, called me twice and spent an hour of his time going very thoroughly through all the concerns which I had and discussing with me the potential options um, um, which uh, I will have after after this program and also all the benefits of getting the degree. And I can certainly say after spending two years at ISAF that uh, um, this thesis of, um, um, of the uh, professors being very much involved into the destiny of students has uh, actually um, proven itself many, many more times um, uh, over that period. Um, the second uh, reason which, uh, or the second thing which I considered was curriculum. And uh, I think that I can uh, certainly say that I think the ISAF's um, uh, curriculum strikes um, a very fine balance between uh, practical and uh, theoretical programs. So I think uh, as an exit opportunity after the program, uh, you will have all the, all the doors open for you to either join academia if you'd like to do so, or to uh, take almost any professional path which you foresee for yourself. Uh, the um, point number three, which I considered for myself and which I found very important was uh, the fact that uh, the degree is taught in English and that uh, it's done under the supervision of the LSE, which uh, you might know is uh, uh, the best, um, um, uh, well, is uh, something what's considered the best economic school in the world. I think that um, um, having on your CV, uh, on your CV, the fact that you've studied in English and that your studies have been supervised uh, and conducted by professors from the LSE helps certainly a lot with you, for you to find a job. And uh, again, uh, arguably uh, the ISAF program um, is, um, 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 is well recognized by most universities, by, I'd say by all top universities globally and also by all uh, top employees globally. Uh, and the last point on the program which I wanted to make is obviously last, well, last but not least is about the people who you will be studying with um, I think uh, if I look at um, if I look at the people who I've studied with, they've always been uh, one of the main cheerleaders for me and one of the main motivators. And uh, in my professional job uh, today, while being in London, uh, I um, I'm, I regularly come across uh, other graduates from ISAF uh, across um, all of the banks and across all of the consulting firms uh, here in London and also uh, in Moscow. Um, I think the last, um, actually, the last point to, to make on the program is I think that well, it uh, certainly stands out from a lot of other programs as a place which adores meritocracy and um, as, as a place which sets a level playing field for everyone and cherishes the talent. So if you are willing to commit uh, a lot of effort that, uh, to your studies, that effort certainly will be rewarded and um, um, ISAF is a great place to be in. Um, I was also asked. Uh, I was also asked to speak briefly about my career and um, uh, my day-to-day -day job. As I mentioned, uh, I work as an equity research analyst covering uh, industrial machinery sector um, at Credit Suisse. Uh, so I cover companies um, like Siemens, Philips, um, and um, other big industrial names in Europe. Uh, my daily job is basically doing very detailed uh, research on uh, on the markets and on the companies and then advising uh, institutional investors. Uh, so um, companies like hedge funds, uh, pension funds, insurance firms, et cetera, uh, on whether uh, we think certain industrial companies are um, good or bad investment opportunities for them. Um, I think it's been, um, it's been a great journey. Um, and um, I guess um, I'd be happy to take any questions um, and, um, uh, if you don't have questions at the moment, please feel free to reach out on LinkedIn or on Facebook. Okay, thanks, Satyam. Any questions, guys? Please, if you have them, ask, uh, ask questions. You can send them in chat. We'll be also happy to answer questions. Uh, All right, then uh, uh, we can have our next speaker. Thank you very much.
Sorry, there is a question for Artyom uh, here in chat. Yes, just give me a sec to read through how it was important for the career to pass the CFA test. Well, hi, Daniela. It's, um, um, I, it is important, I think, if you'd like to do a professional uh, financial career, CFA is certainly something uh, very well um, acknowledged in the industry. I think um, it certainly helps you with your professional skills when you start your job. Uh, and also, more importantly, if you decide to change your job, I think it's, uh, it's a very nice add-on to, uh, um, to have CFA um, on your CV. So I'd encourage you to, um, to, to certainly consider one if, uh, if you'd like to go into the financial, um, um, if you'd like to, to go into financial roles in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Arthur. Um, greetings, everyone. I uh, hope you can he hear me well. Uh, my name is uh, Vladimir Maligan. I'm uh, 26 years old and uh, have a background in uh, electrical engineering. I gra graduated from Severo Federal University in 2015. And then I uh, also had an exchange semester in Czech Technical University in Prague. Um, then I worked uh, for uh, half a year in a portfolio company of uh, Milhouse Capital where actually I started thinking about how important uh, finance in my life and how, uh, how good I need to know them. So that's the starting point of my, uh, of my I would say journey to consider a master's program. So um, uh, yeah, I will uh, come back to this a bit, little bit later. Uh, also, uh, currently I work as a quantitative analyst uh, in Aachen, Netherlands. Um, so basically live in Netherlands for one and a half year already. Um, I also want to thank you very much for, in, in, uh, for inviting me to this event. Um, I believe uh, ISAF is uh, one of the best uh, master's uh, program in Russia and I believe uh, the best in the financial field. So uh, while considering uh, this program, I was indeed th thought about the same. I had the same reasoning as Artem had in his mind, but uh, yeah, since he probably had already some financial background, I had only um, yeah, mathematical uh, skills and uh, knowledge in physics, but uh, had uh, uh, nothing, I, I, I did know nothing about, uh, uh, about finance actually. So, uh, and I considered ISAF uh, because of its uh, taught in English, had a very strong, uh, 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 strong professors that I was sure that uh, can teach me well and it's very acknowledged in, in industry. So at the same time, uh, an important uh, point was uh, to have a possibility to have a second year in uh, abroad. That's what actually I did. I studied my second year in Erasmus University Rotterdam, uh, where I graduated from the uh, master's program in financial economics. So it is the same name, but a little bit different program with one year program. And uh, ISAF, uh, ISAF played uh, quite a big role in this step. So, yeah, I will uh, explain this a little bit better if uh, some questions uh, are in chat. But uh, yes, I, I believe uh, if, uh, if one decides to go for ISAF, he or she will definitely uh, learn a lot about finance, about uh, Econometrics. So while you, all of us uh, know now that uh, it's not, it's a little bit not enough to know just finance and economics. Currently, we apply very modern uh, uh, econome econometrician methods to analyze the data. Even just I believe in equity research or is in uh, in other fields. So as a as a quantitative analyst and data scientist, I apply plenty of them, and uh, the majority of them are new in. Uh, in, in ISAF during our very rigorous econometrics courses. So that's a very important skill that I learned there. Mm, yeah, and uh, also the, the opportunity to study in English is uh, quite advantage uh, if we compare with other programs uh, in Russia. Um, yes, uh, I would also, uh, I also believe uh, 
that um, mm, as students will, uh, even though I didn't have uh, the possibility to study ap uh, applicable courses during the second year, uh, a number of my uh, classmates actually had advantage of uh, studying uh, uh, courses that help helped them to prepare for their career during the second year. And uh, I believe it's also another a strong advantage for this program. Mm, I also, uh, I was asked uh, to tell you about my career in a bit more details. So, as I mentioned, I work as the quantitative analyst at the moment. Uh, three areas that I mainly cover is uh, we create uh, models to assess market and credit risk. Then we build um, some automation models that uh, help our portfolio managers to increase their efficiency, to reduce the amount of routine down. And we simply uh, try trying to uh, yeah to achieve more for less time. Uh, and also we built uh, some predictive models to to help us to <laughs> improve our investment decisions in this uh, very unstable and uncertain world. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I will be pleased to answer your questions if uh, if you have one. Is a question? Yes, sure. To tell how strong and deep mathematical base is required, uh, uh, it's a little bit open question. So, if we talk about uh, ISEF, uh, ISEF, I would say uh, you, you definitely need some uh, some knowledge in linear algebra and mathematical analysis. Uh, yeah, but uh, at the same time, you, if you have this uh, some core, some basis, the program will definitely increase your knowledge increase your 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 bring build a, a strong core around you so you will be you will be comfortable working with all kind of data all kind of models so that's uh, it will be tough but it, it you will be thankful uh, in the in the at the end of the day in, in my opinion um, so in if we talk about uh, my current career uh, deep mathematical base is definitely required it's just because when you work with complex models you need to go through of all these elements and you need to understand from what kind of parts it uh, they are built so uh, i would say if you start working on this in in your masters it will be it will be just fine to 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 start your career. Uh, I also have other questions. Thank you for the presentation. Tell something more about CQF. Yeah, thank you. Uh, CQF is a half a year uh, uh, course. It's called Certificate in Quantitative Finance. Um, yeah, basically it's a it's a course which consists of uh, two big modules. Uh, one of them uh, co uh, covers uh, working with the derivatives and uh, building models around this and another one is focused on data science and machine learning it's a uh, it's a course that uh, is and i would say known in industry very well but in quant industry uh, and in uh, derivative derivatives and hedging uh, environment so uh, i've i believe it's very useful and uh, builds uh, a number of skills but uh, at the same time yeah i would say icef covers a variety of topics from this from this course so i, I will be pleased to to give to give you more details if you reach me via linkedin or yeah or my email uh, also there is i would like to know if there is any professor at icef interested in applying data science in financial issues I don't think it's. Uh, uh, I think Maxim uh, or I should, uh, should answer that question. So we. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. We have, uh, um, so uh, uh, we have a, a, a course, a fairly new course since last year, taught by uh, Fabian Slonimchik uh, in uh, um, in data science and big data, uh, which is taught during the second year. It's a fairly successful course. Uh, he, uh, Fabian himself uh, has interest in this area. 
there is also uh, Vitalis, uh, uh, who also uh, who also teaches uh, a course and does work uh, in, uh, in, in applied data science. So yes, the answer is yes, these two people uh, do, do this kind of work. And uh, uh, all right, the uh, admissions process with high score in, um, in file, uh, you know, yes, uh, like then eight plus or higher. Um, well, no, so the uh, uh, English test, uh, uh, they just, we just need to meet a certain bar in order to, uh, to, get, to, to get admitted. Uh, but the decisions, uh, uh, the, the decisions are based on, uh, um, on other aspects, on other parts of the portfolio. Right? So the, um, all you need is to score sufficiently high. And once you do, uh, the, that's, it doesn't really matter which particular point that you get. Uh, also, if scores in GRE subject test the math plus GMAT are high, but not high enough to get a max score in portfolio competition, will it support candidate application? Yes, certainly. Certainly, we will uh, take that into, uh, into consideration that uh, even though you, you didn't score um, very highly to get you uh, admitted just based on the scores themselves, uh, we would still, or you would still get some extra points in your portfolio, for sure. Uh, uh, all right, uh, let's keep the context. Uh, comes from Colombia. Uh, hi, Miguel. Great uh, to know more about the full scholarship, uh, like the time to apply and the requirements. Uh, for that, uh, I uh, once again I would encourage you to come to the open uh, to the open day, the open doors event we will have on November fifteenth, uh, and uh, um, we will uh, we will have a, a, a the presentation there will be devoted specifically to that to the program and to the admissions process as a well. whole. Uh, so you will uh, get to uh, to ask all kinds of questions there. Uh, uh, meanwhile, you can uh, uh, you can also send inquiries uh, by, by email, but basically the procedure is first to apply and then uh, the financial aid, aid part, uh, part is decided. But if, uh, do you accept the letter from the university to prove that I studied the program in English in order not to pass? Uh, uh, yeah, well, um, welcome. So, uh, 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 for Alexei, it is a. Uh, we did. I, I believe this uh, uh, this year, unfortunately, due to uh, due to the regulations, uh, and due to the requirements we have, um, we are not able to, uh, uh, to to admit ISA students, even though they're studied uh, in English, without an uh, an English test, without the disqualification. Uh, as much as we would like to, we, we do know that ISA graduates study in English and uh, their English is good enough. Um, uh, unfortunately, the, the, the regulatory part doesn't need to do that. All right, uh, Vladimir, uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for your presentation. Uh, and. Uh, uh, Anna Vyacheslavna, uh, Vladimir, I would like to cover some work abroad tips, as I know. Vladimir? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Thank, uh, yeah, thanks. So, uh, I have a few uh, tips uh, to give you uh, if you would like to pursue a career abroad. Uh, I believe, even though it's a challenging, it, it, it is possible, uh, as is shown by uh, our graduates. Uh, but I believe you need to focus on these uh, yeah, six or maybe a little bit less uh, items to to find it. Uh, first of all, you already can start uh, building a strong profile uh, to stand out. It's uh, uh, it can be inter uh, internships, uh, certificates, uh, outstanding grades, whatever, to stand you out. You, I also highly recommend to consider a possibility to get the, uh, of getting a uh, double degree. So, as you know, uh, my, uh, ISEF provides you an opportunity to study abroad for the second year. So, uh, or you just, you can try uh, study uh, for a semester as an exchange student. It will help you uh, with the 
uh, yeah, with cultural understanding, with networking, and uh, a second degree will help you with uh, uh, with with getting a visa, which is actually quite important uh, when you start your career abroad. Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, you you definitely should uh, pay some attention to writing a really strong uh, cover letter. Uh, yeah, please uh, do your homework, read about uh, company reports, and uh, uh, devote yourself uh, to, to write a really good cover letter. It will help. Uh, uh, I believe finding someone uh, in LinkedIn will help you a lot in understanding uh, what uh, actually the department of uh, the, the target department uh, does and uh, maybe this uh, yeah this person will help you to introduce uh, to introduce you to 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 the team and to to push your uh, your resume uh, never underestimate this item it helped me uh, actually when i uh, when i was uh, pursuing a job in Aachen. Um, yeah, don't uh, be afraid of uh, getting uh, rejects. So it's just fine to, to have it. Uh, don't give up and uh, pursue a dream. And uh, sometimes, if you if you know what kind of country you you like, and uh, you already can uh, start thinking about learning uh, a local language, because uh, yes, sometimes it uh, makes the, uh, a difference. To, to if, if you show this during uh, an interview or just market in your uh, resume. Um, that's it, uh, and good luck, all of you. Thank you very much, Vladimir. Um, so there was a, a couple questions uh, since. Uh, one is, unfortunately, I uh, cannot answer because I can only understand and answer questions in English or Russian, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, uh, the other is uh, whether we accept uh, um, a specialist degree of Russian for tuition. Yes, yeah, so of course a bachelor or a specialist degree uh, uh, would be fine. Um, uh, FC or CAE instead of um, ALS or TOEFL. Um, I don't, uh, Maxim, would you be able to answer no, that? No, at the moment, at the moment we do not accept it, unfortunately. We require IELTS or TOEFL. Well, there is also an, uh, an internal test uh, that uh, students can, ta uh, can, can take. Right? We also have an uh, ICEP uh, English test that is similar in structure, in structure to IELTS. So if uh, uh, it's, an, it's an alternative option. Okay. Well, um, thank you, Vladimir. More questions. Uh, hopefully, more questions will come. Uh, but then uh, uh, we should uh, welcome Vladislav and uh, let him uh, speak. Hello. Hello. I guess the floor is mine. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, uh, basically, I studied together with the previous speaker and uh, compared to him, I have a general background in uh, economics and finance. Uh, I studied on the ISAF master's program as a part of a dual degree program. That basically means that uh, uh, during its first year, uh, I studied on the ISAF program, and in the second year, I went abroad to study finance at Lancaster University in the UK. Um, after having got my master's degree, uh, I started my journey in the field of credit risk management. Uh, first, I worked in one of the leading credit risk consulting companies in Russia, uh, but uh, about half a year ago, I moved to Frankfurt, Germany to join a regulatory quant team at uh, PwC Germany. Um, as a credit risk consultant, uh, I mostly develop and validate regulatory credit risk uh, models uh, aimed at assessment of uh, expected and unexpected credit losses. Uh, moreover, when working in a consulting company, 
you basically enjoy a great deal of other activities like uh, preparing presentations, uh, preparing documentation, developing methodologies, uh, communicating with clients, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and actually, it's a, a very good experience and uh, it's very interesting. Uh, at the moment, uh, I obtain uh, the CFA level one and the firm level one certifications and uh, seek to gain the corresponding designations one day. Uh, speaking about the ISEF program, I totally agree with the other speakers that uh, the program has a lot of advantages. In particular, for me, it was very important that uh, disciplines were taught in English, totally in English, and uh, uh, the program was of a very high level. Uh, uh, probably now I should uh, speak about the tips I have prepared. Yeah, uh, although I have prepared a few tips for you to build a successful career, uh, there is no, let's say, uh, cure for everything. That means that uh, you should take it as, uh, uh, you should take it in combination and uh, in reality, it might be the case that uh, uh, you can find some other method which fits your expectations in the best way. The first three tips are very obvious. Be proactive, follow your passions and keep on developing. Uh, these are basically the things which uh, you should always do in the background. You should always find uh, small things to develop yourself, uh, like uh, participate in conferences, uh, write articles, uh, study, work, and so on and so forth. Uh, everything should help. And the, the ISA program here might be a very good start. Then you should understand that uh, your potential employer uh, is more interested not just in your theoretical knowledge, but also in your practical skills, which you gain during your previous jobs, uh, on your previous jobs. Uh, of course, this is not a must, but uh, uh, it would definitely distinguish you from other candidates. When uh, searching a job abroad, uh, it's also a very good point, uh, which might be dedicated to international experience. And here, uh, studying abroad might help. And this is important not just due to legislative problems or to learn a language, but uh, it might be also helpful to just like uh, see the way of life there and uh, uh, it might be funny, but uh, you might not like it. Uh, then you should uh, establish connections with other professionals. Uh, these new connections will not just give you insights uh, on the role you're interested in or applying for, uh, you might also get more information about uh, available vacancies and if you manage to establish very good relationships you might also skip the first rounds of uh, the hiring process uh, don't forget here about uh, professional uh, social networks like linkedin uh, don't forget to make your profile stand out from other profiles uh, and actually this is a very important tip and uh, this tip worked in my case uh, actually uh, i didn't search for my current role for my current job my employer found me on linkedin and last but not least don't panic don't panic if it doesn't go as it was planned uh, just do your thing do your best and you will definitely do it for example uh, you don't even need to find a work abroad right after you finish your studies. Uh, in my case, I found my job abroad two years after my studies. So don't panic and do your thing. Thank you for uh, your attention. Good luck. I don't know if we have questions here. Thank you, Vladislav. Let's see if we have, uh, uh, please, uh ask your questions if you have them we're all here to answer them if uh, 
uh, if there are no more questions, then uh, um, we'll. Sorry, is there a question? If not, then uh, uh, well, let's uh, um, say thank you to um, our speakers and our our graduates, and uh, uh, to all of you for uh, for coming. And, uh, we'll hope to see you uh, uh, on November fifteenth uh, at our open day. So uh, here are some uh, some contacts. If maybe you'll have some uh, have some questions. Uh, uh, after we're finished here, you can uh, you can always uh, uh, send your quest questions by email. And uh, uh, again, uh, do come on November fifteenth, and uh, uh, you can uh, uh, you can learn more about the program and about the admissions process uh, process there. Okay, thank you, and. Good luck. Good luck. We'll be happy to see you.